In any given nursery, growers will use a variety of methods to produce large volumes of high quality plants. In this video, we are going to take a look at five different methods of propagating plants by seed, cuttings, division, layering, and bulbs. Each of these methods will be differently suited to certain plants, facilities, and budgets, and we will explain which methods, or combinations thereof, will be best for any given situation. If you would like to download all of the information presented in this video, then you can check out the link to our ebook in the description. Let's get started by discussing the basic differences between the five propagation methods. Seeds are the result of sexual reproduction where a flower is pollinated and the fertilized ovule develops into a seed. Flowers can be self-pollinated, where pollen is donated by the same flower or a different flower that is genetically identical to the receiving flower. Flowers can also be cross-pollinated. In these cases, the flower from which the pollen is donated is genetically different to the flower that receives the pollen. Plants grown from self-pollinated seed will be genetically identical to the parent plant but plants grown from cross-pollinated seed will have a combination of characteristics of both the pollen donating and pollen receiving parent plant. Cutting propagation is a form of asexual reproduction and all daughter plants will have identical characteristics to the parent plant from which they are taken. Cuttings can be made from both the stem and root system, but not all plants will be suited to both methods. Plants grown from cuttings will mature faster than those grown from seed. Division is a method of propagating plants by separating mature plants into smaller batches that can themselves continue to grow into larger specimens. Like cuttings, by dividing plants, all offspring will be identical to the parent plants. This can be a labor-intensive process, but the newly divided plants will have its own root system, albeit a small one, in place making them less susceptible to stresses like water deficiencies or heat exposure. Layering, another form of asexual reproduction, applies not only to plant species that produce stolons or runners naturally, but also to those plants that grow long stems that can be air-layered. In these cases, the young plants remain attached to the parent plant and can benefit from the nutrients and water supplied by that parent plant. Lastly, bulbs and other storage organs, such as corms and tubers, are often very easy to grow. The bulbs can be bought from a supplier, and the grower can either sell the bulbs as young plants, or continue to produce more bulbs year after year as the daughter bulbs grow from the parent bulb. Now that we have briefly discussed each of the five methods, let's take a closer look at these techniques and see how you can best use them to your advantage in your nursery. Seeds are a great way to grow thousands and thousands of plants from a comparatively small initial investment. Sometimes, Nurseries will harvest seed from their own stock at the end of the growing season, allow them to dry and then sow them at the beginning of the next growing season. Seed can also be purchased from reputable suppliers, which will offer a vast variety of different species and special varieties that can be picked based on current and predicted consumer preferences. After the seed is harvested or ordered, the grower will need to make sure the following is ready before they can start sowing their seed. Seed trays, germination media, greenhouses or propagation beds, and a reliable irrigation system. Seed trays can have smaller cells, which are suitable for larger seed that can easily be sown into the cells, or smaller seed can be sown into bigger trays that contain no cells. Trays should be filled with a high quality germination medium. This medium must contain fine fibers with a high water holding capacity. Coir and sustainable peat mixes are commonly used. After the seed has been sown, the trays need to be kept in greenhouses or propagation beds with reliable mist irrigation to provide the sensitive seed with the optimum temperature, humidity, and irrigation. Once the young seedlings have grown, they must be transplanted into pots or plastic bags. Seed propagation is suited to plants that cannot be grown from cuttings or any other propagation method. Ornamental grasses and sedges are often grown from seed sown into large trays, and the seedlings are progressively planted into larger cells and bags. Seeds are also cost-effective and may be ideal for novice growers looking to start their own nursery. Cutting propagation can be used to grow mature plants a lot faster compared to seed propagation. A grower can either purchase cuttings in the form of plugs or unrooted cuttings from suppliers, or if they have mother stock, they can take their own cuttings. When purchased in the form of plugs, the young plants should be kept in a greenhouse or propagation bed to harden off and acclimate to the new environment. This will make the plants less sensitive to stress. After they have hardened off, they can be planted into pots and bags and grow into mature plants. If a grower takes their own cuttings, they must make sure of the following. The plant must be in the correct physiological stage. This means some plants require softer growth for cuttings, while others require hardened, woody growth. Cuttings must not be allowed to dry out. Therefore, they should be taken in the early morning or evening when temperatures are cool and they need to be stuck as soon as possible. And the necessary rooting hormones and rooting trays filled with medium must be provided. Depending on the cutting, sensitive plants should be kept in a humid mist bed while more resilient cuttings can be kept under shade nets. Once roots have grown, the plants can be potted up and sold once they have matured. Many perennial species like lavender, viburnum, osteospermums and star jasmine can be grown from cuttings. Annuals such as pansies and violas, or other plants that have a spreading habit instead of an erect one, are not suitable for cutting propagation. 
If you're thinking about growing cuttings from your own mother stock, make sure you have the necessary plant breeder's rights to do so. Division is a useful method of not only keeping mature plants neat and healthy, but multiplying them in an almost cost-free way. Firstly, the mature plants need to be removed from their pots or bags. They can be cut or pulled apart before the smaller pieces are repotted and allowed to grow before they are sold. Often, the root system and leaves will need to be trimmed back when the plants are divided. Like cuttings, division is a form of asexual propagation and all of the newly separated plants will be identical to one another. Plants that are commonly divided include Agapanthus, Dietes, and some grass species. However, many growers find that the stress of division causes the grasses to die. So trial and error is often required before a grower can know exactly what plants are suitable for division. Due to the labour required and fact that division can only be done once a season on mature plants, this method is not as popular as seed or cutting propagation and therefore may only be used in a small number of species in a nursery. Some plants, such as strawberries and raspberries, reproduce naturally by sending out runners and stolons that grow new plants at their tips. Growers can take advantage of this by staking the new plantlets in their own pots and by the time they have established a healthy root system, they can be removed from the mother plant. Plants that grow long stems, such as Moringa and many deciduous nut species, can be air-layered. In this method, an aerial stem is wounded, rooting hormone is applied, and a rooting medium is wrapped around the wound and sealed. After a couple of months of root growth, the stems are removed from the mother plant and the new plant is repotted. Roses can also be layered by taking any long stems, lowering them to the ground, and covering the stems with soil which will encourage new root development. As we mentioned before, the new plantlets benefit from receiving all of the nutrients and water while they are still attached to the mother plant. This makes air layering very useful for many species that are difficult to grow from cuttings, especially many nut trees like pecans. However, like division, it can be a labor-intensive method with a lower reproductive payoff compared to seed and cutting propagation. This reproductive technique is therefore reserved for a select few species. As underground storage organs, bulbs, tubers and corms are often deciduous species that rest during the off-season and grow during the on-season. A grower can pre-order their bulbs months before the growing season and they will receive their orders later when the time for planting nears. A grower needs to make sure they are able to correctly store their bulbs before they are planted. Mesh bags in a cool, dry environment are suited to many species. Before planting, bulbs should be treated with a systemic fungicide to protect the plants from fungal pathogens. A well-draining mix should be used to prevent the bulb from rotting. The bulbs can be sold once the foliage and flowers starts to grow, which makes the turnaround from planting to sale very short. Growers can also keep some stock back and harvest the new daughter bulbs every season and continuously replant and harvest them year after year. Winter bulbs, such as Watsonia, and other species like Gladiolus, Dahlias, Tulips, and Daffodils are grown from bulbs, tubers, and corms. And that brings us to the end of our video on the many ways nurseries can grow their plants. Let us know in the comments which method you would employ if you own, or would like to own, a plant nursery. Before you go, remember to download your copy of our ebook and we will see you in the next video.